sponsored by Paradox. Is it possible to beat Stellaris without ever leaving your home planet? In a normal game of Stellaris Nexus, you're supposed to explore and conquer the galaxy. But today, instead of committing genocide, I'm um. going to stay home and make friends. I embarked upon the challenge as the Rock Nation. Oh, but before I get started, I actually only chose the rock because I got stuck picking last in a game with some of my friends. Would you prefer that I be the rock people or the research people? You could be the coolest or the dorkiest. Dork, dork, dork. Dork, go dork. Go dork. Oh, yeah, 100% dork. Hard, nope, hard, I'm the rock. Okay, the rocks are fun. You can't fight the rock people. You can never take their planets. Would you like some of our rock culture? What? Honestly, I don't care about rock culture, but you can spread it to me. It, it doesn't really make a difference. At I'll all accept with my your rock plan. culture. Cleeper, I'm sending you a worse technology, so I'm going to send you how's 50 credits. I, I have 300. I don't need any money. Okay. But he did set in a really nice way. That makes me rock hard. I like yeah. that. I like that. Anyway, if you want to check out Stellaris Nexus, it's kind of like a light version of the game you can complete in about an hour, losing to your friends. Or just alone, like me, if you don't have any friends. Links in the description. But without any further ado, on to the challenge. So I set out in the year 2301 as the rock people. Our home planet, Orion 4. Seated on the edge of the galaxy between the Chinor, the ruthless capitalists who all look like Squidward, and the Kalazan, primitive, warlike bug people. I got to work. As the rock people, it was the ultimate turtle strategy. Our star base, a giant rock. Our ships. Rocks also. We set out by exploring the nearby universe on planets UU and 00111000, discovering, unfortunately, nothing of particular interest beyond our own rock world. So to complete more actions each turn, we made an early investment into rock factories and rock embassies, which added to our production and support resources. The advantage of staying at home is you don't really waste any resources on expansion and getting your whole fleet killed. But the main way that the rock people grow is through an edict called insular growth, which is basically rock incest. Rock people, after all, are very reproductive, and they love rock culture, rock music, and spreading it to nearby civilizations. So we spread our seed across the galaxy. That and well, we also spend a lot of money on political lobbying. The goal of Stellaris Nexus, after all, isn't to conquer the galaxy, but to score points with the Galactic Council, which takes place every seven years or so. Score enough points and you win the game. Therefore, as the ruthless Squidward capitalists explored and colonized nearer to our homeworld, we researched commerce to build trade districts where a rock and squid alike could join hands in friendly trade. We also reduced the cost of spreading rock culture to ensure the dissemination of rock throughout the cosmos. This is actually worth a ton of victory points, and is also rescorable every Galactic Council meeting. That's right, every seven years we held a contest where we agreed that the rock were, hands down, most cultured species of all. I mean, there wasn't much else to choose from. Space Squidward, Skaven, literally Skaven, Tyranids, Eldari, and whatever this thing is. So we employed the techniques of the Chinese philosophy of Taoism. The best man is like water, who goes beneath and benefits everything. So we focused on our own Sigma male grind set. We removed ourselves from the petty shackles of interspecies conflict, even when the intergalactic squid emperor started to make aggressive pushes toward our home planet. Ain't nobody got time for that. We just traded them more technology and remained peaceful. And so over the years, we just kept trading the squid people more and more money and technology to help us advance. It didn't matter if we helped their civilization a bit. Our homeworld was already rock hard and impenetrable to squid and skaven alike. While other species fought over control of the central nexus for points, we stayed at home in our mom's basement and worked on our side hustle. In the meantime, we completed espionage to gain sight lines of other factions, employing the art of deception, trading, and entering into pacts with the um, Tyranids and uh, bug people to hand over their technology, since admittedly the squid people were beginning to surround our home planet and even openly declare war on us. But we were above all that, man, so we just kept sending the squid people trade deals while secretly stealing their technology under the table. All the while, we were racking up victory points as rock culture spread throughout the known universe. As the rock proliferated and became more productive on our homeworld, we achieved the celebrated roles of economist, governor, and, um, culture. 
Gradually over time, Weave the Rock Nation grew and became stronger. So even when the squid people surrounded our home planet and sent their entire fleet to wipe us out, they failed miserably, since we were able to outpace them with our roaring rock economy. This was all due to the fact that the bug people and the Tyranids both wanted to trade with us since our economy and stock exchanges were so much more advanced than everyone else's. This, in turn, gave us enough money to keep bribing the space squids to stop attacking us, all the while we bolstered the military prowess of our homeworld. This is actually a rock nation specialty. It's notoriously difficult to conquer the rock people. So naturally, when the next galactic council took place, the rock nearly swept the standings, recognized for having the most culture, the most citizen support, and the most money. We were clearly better than everyone, just look at how productive our home planet is. It's plain to behold, rock people were the best. But don't think for a second that it was due only to our natural talents, no. We hustled and employed skullduggery to bribe our neighbors with cash money, to send us their technology so we could play them off against one another, fighting viciously over the central nexus tooth and nail. All the while, we of the rock grew and advanced our nation on the sidelines, no, I mean literally, we bribed them until they couldn't possibly refuse. In the art of war, we won battles before they even occurred, simply by outpacing our rivals and playing them off against one another, making them all offers at better and better technology, while we ourselves benefited the most and advanced the most, simply by being peaceful and dealing with all of them without discriminating or resorting to violence or warlike means. We are not savages. And before you know it, rock culture had spread throughout almost every single sector of the galaxy. We had amassed so much money that we were able to start just literally buying votes for the Galactic Council. So even in the year 2333, when everyone voted against our proposals, we single-handedly rocked the ballot because we were so much more important. Now completely dominant in both the intergalactic economy and the political spheres, we constructed megastructures on our homeworld to grow even more powerful. And we used our deep pockets to buy out all the remaining technology and advance far beyond the vast horizons of science and technology where no alien race had treaded before. We had deals with every race and species for long-lasting peace and commerce. And if they disagreed, we just bribed them. This was, of course, how we fended off the Squid People invasions of 2317, 2321, 2330, and 2338. All until eventually I got fed up with fighting a defensive war against failure Squid People every year, and decided to build an actual military. But all this was only a victory lap, as the Squid had already ruined their chances at victory by flinging themselves destructively into our rock-hard defenses every few years, crippling their chances and ever bouncing back economically. We increased, we hardened, and it was nice. We had achieved so much, but at long last in the year 2344, when all seemed won, reared the ominous threat of the late game crisis. There could be only one ruler, who would seize control of the Nexus itself? Here at the penultimate conflict, our self-imposed rule of staying in one place and never leaving our home planet at last came back to cripple us. How could we beat Stellaris Nexus without the Nexus? An existential crisis for the Rock. We hadn't expanded because we were above war and colonization, favoring peaceful trade and mutual prosperity, indirectly leading us to become the most powerful nation of them all. So what would be our answer when all the other aliens were fighting over the prized nexus at the center of the galaxy, seat of civilization, and beating heart of the universe itself? We wouldn't fight them with arms, we were above that. No, if we couldn't control the galaxy, no one would. So we dispatched the Rock Secret Service to conduct espionage at destabilizing the Nexus itself, wresting control of that acclaimed planet from all other aliens vying for power in the Rat Race. Which, ironically, included the Rat People. Until at last, in the year 2348, the Nexus remained out of the dirty hands of those who would seek to do harm with its control. It all culminated in the final year, when we of the Rock scored enough points with the Galactic Council to be named Emperor and Supreme Leader of the Nexus once and for all. Gaiety was had, victory at last, and all in the name of staying at home. And that 
my friends, is how you beat Stellaris Nexus without the Nexus. Anyway, big thanks to Paradox once again for sponsoring this look at Stellaris Nexus. It's kind of like a light version of Stellaris if you're ever too intimidated but wanted to check out the game. Anyway, if you want to check it out, my link is in the description. And a big thanks to Spiff, Josh, Kleeper, Lollop, and Hazor for playing with me. So uh, go check out their content, links below. I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. A big thanks to my patrons, none of whom have ever left their starting planet. Until next time.